All her attention was on the beekeeper, who was old and small, bird-like with her beady black eyes and fragile body. Her face was as tawny-skinned as Melita's, but wrinkled like a dried golden plum. Her neck lay in loose folds, and more wrinkles ran down her neck and throat, deep as storm channels in mud. The hand she held out to Melita in welcome was bent into an arthritic claw, and the only possible reaction was to hold it gently, then let go. It was difficult to harbor resentment against somebody more ancient than Melita had ever imagined it was possible to be. The beekeeper's voice was quiet, but stronger than Melita expected, with a hint of power underlying the words. Oh, boundaries look different from the other side, don't you think? It is a boundary, then, Melita replied, wary. Oh, yes, my dear. I can't be doing with tigers, wolves, foxes, and bears among the livestock. They'd scare the horses and eat the chickens. And you already know what the bees think, don't you? They are safe here. We live in the forest, but we are not of it. The forest creatures have their habitat, and we have ours. I think Triana told you. All who live here on the farm are safe. Like in the citadel, Melita kept her voice expressionless, but her anger must have shown. The beekeeper's serene smile reminded Melita of somebody, but she couldn't quite place the resemblance. Now I understand why you don't trust me. No, indeed, not like the citadel at all. My daughter and I created the boundary and this haven. Her face wrinkled more, 